Palette flipping. I've been seeing this craze going on for the past six months all over social media. Some have claimed to make hundreds if not thousands of dollars to a point where they are able to pay for all of their living expenses. Me being the entrepreneur who doesn't like to miss out on securing the bag, well, I had to give it a try. Was this all hype? Was this something sustainable? Would this finally get me out of the trenches? Well, I decided to purchase pallets of what I was most familiar with. No, there's no way. Looks like we just won our first pallet. I was not ready to start making these purchases, nor did I have the equipment to help me move these pallets around. So I decided to play around and place a few low bids on some of these pallets. And guess what? To my surprise, all of the pallets that I placed bids on, I ended up winning. I knew that I couldn't store all of these pallets in my 10 by 20 garage, so I went on a hunt to find the perfect warehouse that fit all my needs that could fit all of the 11 pallets that were on their way. Quite frankly, I had no clue where to look because this was all new to me. Then I ran into a warehouse that was offering a wide range of different square footage of warehouses. It ranged from about three to 400 square feet up to 1200 square feet you might be wondering where I'm driving well I'm gonna let you guys know distribution center told me that the pallets were the pallets were supposed to be delivered this morning around 8 in the morning and so that's exactly what I was planning on I took the day off because I thought they were coming in because that's what I was told and what was supposed to happen before they were gonna deliver the pallets to me was a, the truck driver was supposed to reach out to me and schedule a time but they didn't and so I was very speculative on whether or not it was actually going to be delivered this morning at 8 and so I reached out to the distribution center and I asked them like can you give me any tracking updates what's going on is it going to come today and he said that it looks like it's only actually going to be picked up today um, from the location in the Seattle area so once they pick it up they will let me know and that is when they're going to schedule a time to come and deliver it but what does me driving in a car have to do with any of this well i am on my way to a um, warehouse facility so i should be there in about seven minutes we're going to check it out together i'm going to show you guys everything and hopefully this works out so i can have that place for all the pallets that i'm going to be purchasing so i can also stage them and and all the good stuff So we're gonna go ahead, walk in, take a look, and see if this works for us. Alright, so before I left the facility, I want to give you guys an update of what I saw, what my impressions are, and let me tell you guys, I have only good impressions about this place. I'm actually pretty excited. Um, I, I do need a few weeks before I sign the lease, which I probably will sign the lease, but this location really does have everything I need. It is about a 10-12 minute drive from me. It has loading docks that you can back up to and docks that go up and down. So it'd be perfect for a box truck. She also said if I want to risk it and leave my box truck here, I can. She said there have been a few incidents where some of the trucks have had diesel stolen from them. I mean, it's Portland. What do you expect? Although this was the perfect warehouse, I was not able to sign the lease, wire over the money and get access to the keys of the warehouse until about a few weeks down the road. So with six of the 11 pallets already on the way, well, I had a bit of a dilemma. So what I did was I called my parents and I told them, hey, look, I'm in a bit of a little situation here, so hear me out. And they, well, they ended up agreeing and I was able to store the pallets at their place until I was able to get the keys to the warehouse. Before the pallets came in, there was one more thing that I had to do. <laughs> I quickly stopped by Home Depot to grab a pallet jack because I, I don't have one. I'm not really prepared for this. So I had to go pick up a pallet jack. Just picked it up on my way to the delivery place where he will go ahead and drop it off. They decided to do it in two separate shipments because they would not fit a 53 foot trailer into a residential area, which is where it's gonna get dropped off. So they split it into two box truck deliveries and the first box truck is there right now. So I gotta hurry up because he just arrived and I'm 10 minutes away.
when I saw how much they were going for, I'm like, you know, I'll probably bid on these a little more. And then I ended up winning too many. <laughs> oh, did you? <laughs> I did. I told my mom, my mom was like, there's no way, like, where are you going to put those? I was like, they're going to your house. Well, the pallets have finally been unloaded. Had the whole family come out here to <laughs> help me unload these and the truck driver himself was very, very helpful. He basically unloaded all of them for me. It just helped him out a little bit. Right here are four pallets. It's kind of hard to see. Um, I'm gonna break all of them down. I'm gonna show you uh, sectional by sectional what each one is. But just as an example, we have this gray one here, which I know it's gonna sell well. We have an all white one, which uh, I'm not excited about because they described it to be as a light gray color, but it came in as white, which is a bit unfortunate, but oh well. This one right here, this Thomasville sectional is a beauty. This is probably the best one out of all of them. Reason why is because it has these tags. This is a brand, basically a brand new sectional couch. So this one right here is a leather, leather recliner reclining sectional but i'm not excited about this one because of that and if you guys can't see that is animal hair it might be some hair we actually have to clean out that i was not really anticipating two of the pallets for the sectionals are in the truck and get this tuesday or thursday i'm receiving another shipment today i received six pallets the next shipment is going to be another five pallets if you want to ask me where i'm going to put them I have no answer for you <laughs> because I, I didn't know what to tell my parents because that's where I'm dropping off all these sectionals for now. I might post one of the sectionals today. Um, I'll see what'll happen, but I wanna post one of these sectionals, see what we can get for it. I gotta get a warehouse that you guys already saw. I'm probably gonna go sign the lease on that one here very shortly. And I'm gonna take all the couches to that warehouse so it's not as chaotic. Since I still had to make deliveries while the other pallets were coming in, well, I had to unload these two pallets that were in my box truck somewhere. and. Luckily, my brother had an empty garage where I was able to drop them off. As you guys know, I have my personal box truck and I was only able to fit two pallets in there just because they were so huge. I I totally underestimated how big these pallets were gonna be. So I'm currently at my brother's place where I'm gonna go ahead and unload them while I transition into a warehouse. Oh yeah, and shout out to that uh, truck driver that came and helped me unload all those couches because if I was doing it, probably would've taken me up to like four hours because those pallets were just way bigger than I expected. And with him, we were able to unload it, I think it was like within like 45 minutes to an hour. So the first sectional has been unloaded. This is the sectional, it's a leather sectional, and it's $3,300 new from Costco. And I only found really just a few minor little things that may be of concern. Uh, there's one little scuff in a corner, and also there's like a dent in the leather because one of the recliners was on top of the other, which I don't think is a big issue, but we're gonna have to see over time if this leather is gonna be able to, I guess, heal itself and go back to what it was. I'm exhausted. All right, just to summarize, we just unloaded two sectionals, unloaded that one right there, unloaded this one, and we ran into a bit of an issue. And the issue is we are not able to find all the legs to this sectional. We're gonna have to dig around. Hopefully they're hidden somewhere, but the first impressions, this sectional is not looking good. We got some damages right here, damages right here, and it's got scuffs around the couch itself. Just. See some dings right here, some more scuffs right here, more scuffs right here, more right here, and just all around. I'm seeing too many scuffs than I would want. These leather couches are a bit risky because they get damaged when you're shipping them. And to restore them, I'm not sure exactly how to do it. I'll have to search around. Maybe there are professionals around that restore leather because I might need to put some money into restoring some of this leather because it's not looking that great. Here we go. First sectional has been Hey, my guy, what are you doing? It's three o'clock right now. What do you do for a living? You're not working? Uh, uh I wake up at 11 a.m. All right, we can stop right there. <laughs> but the moment of truth, we gotta find out how comfortable it is. So here we go. 
something's supposed to happen. <laughs> this is pretty comfortable. What would you say? I mean, yeah. It's uh, I, I mean, I mean, it's I mean yeah. Bad. It's not bad. It's not too shabby. Probably gonna go ahead and post it up since it's one of my first ones. I'm gonna post it up for probably like 1500 maybe. Um, who knows? Maybe we can get a quick sale. Hopefully, I'll have some results for you guys because we got five more shipments coming up and we gotta get moving. We can't be sitting around like this little old man right here. A week after receiving the first six pallets, I was finally able to act. Well, here we are. This right here is a 1,164 square foot warehouse. That's gonna be the new home to this furniture, side hustle business, whatever you wanna call it. Just got the keys from the warehouse and I'm in a bit of a time crunch because I just signed the final paperwork probably like five minutes ago and the next shipment is already almost here. He actually came like 30 minutes ago, but I asked him for an hour heads up, so... Just wanted to let you know that I'm already here, ready to get the shipment whenever you are. Ready? Be there in like 20 to 30 minutes. Okay, cool. See you soon. There are two more pallets that he's gonna go ahead and bring in right now, but they're a lot taller, so I don't know if it's gonna fit through the, the little railing, through the, through the door with a little railing on top. Let's see. Shipment has been delivered. Probably should have zoomed out a little bit. Shipment has been delivered. <laughs> what I did not realize about this shipment right here, and let me move the camera so you guys can see a little bit better. What I did not realize about this shipment was this receipt says that all of this furniture is out of box. So that means that this furniture was just taken out of the box. I don't know if it was sold, so I don't know if this is like a seller's return type of furniture, but the out of box ones are typically in better condition and, oh, sorry, my paper fell. And what, what, <laughs> ugh. Come on, man. And what I can already tell is that sectional right there, the one that you can see is wrapped in the, white foam or whatever it is that one still has tags on it obviously who i got inspiration from was mission side hustle i don't know if you guys have seen that youtube channel definitely go and check it out corey amazing dude really hustling out there and this is who i actually got inspired from tisdale ones which is that one right there i have i'm probably gonna have a total of like five of them after all the shipments come in and i already have two of them and both both are basically new they still have tags on them It is currently 8.23 and the workday has just begun. So far looking solid. As you guys can see right there, it looks like this couch either got into some dirt or uh, it's manufacturing defects. This is why you can't be pushing sectionals around. Just broke off one of the little tips. On a couch that's basically new as well, with tags. Here we are, got these out, ready for clients to stop by and try them out. It is the following day from when you guys saw me open up those pallets and show you guys around some of the couches that came in. And guess what? I might just have gotten some more pallets. <laughs> Before I share with you guys what the projected profit looks like for these pallets, I do wanna mention a few things. These numbers will sound very appealing, but there's a lot of labor intensive things that go into this hustle or business. There are three things that are very important for this business and without them, well, you won't be able to get into this side hustle or business however you wanna look at it. The first thing is 
money. You, you need money for everything in life, especially for this business. It really depends how big you wanna scale it, but if like in my case, I ended up spending over $10,000 on all of these pallets. The second item is the problem that I ran into the most when I began, and that was storing it. Where was I gonna store all of this? As you saw, I began dropping off these pallets at my parents' house, and then I moved them to another garage, and then finally I ended up at this warehouse where I was able to drop everything off, and now this is gonna be the home for this side hustle business. And the third item, I wanna combine two things together. One is time, and the other is the correct equipment. To get into pallet flipping, you really do need time. Yes, you can do it on the side, but as labor t intensive as it is, or as how I've seen it up till now, it's kinda hard to say that you will be able to scale this in any big shape or form if you just keep it as an after hours or after work hours type of thing. Along with that, it's very important to note that you need equipment. For example, when I began, I needed a pallet jack. I didn't have it. So I had to go to Home Depot, I had to pick one up, and I had to remember to go and return it. And when I did, it cost me around 180 bucks. So with all that said, there are many videos on YouTube showing it as if it's a very easy to do, flip these pallets and you're good to go. But really, there's a lot of things that are involved that are behind the scenes and that you might not actually see. This hustle does require a lot of time and energy and if you're not up for it, if you're not up to go and put in some hours after, uh, after work hours, well, this might not be for you. And the other important thing to note is there will definitely be times where you run into a pallet that comes in and the couches are actually damaged and not as described. So to go over these pallets of rugs that I ended up purchasing them, I'm actually gonna switch over to the GoPro. Let's do that. There you go, that is much better. So these three pallets right here total to 47 rugs. Total retail value of these 47 rugs was $8,895 and I ended up purchasing them for $1,287.50. So to go on to this couch right here, this one was a Thomasville. This one retails for about two and a half thousand dollars. I'm gonna put it somewhere up here. And this one ended up costing me a total of $464. So not bad. I mean, even if I can sell it for a thousand bucks, I'd be very happy with it, but I'm actually gonna be aiming for at least 1500. But I will need to clean this up because if you look at some of these corners, and like I already showed you guys, this couch needs a bit of a cleaning. Not a bit, a lot of a cleaning. We also have this little love seat right here, which the retail value is $350. This one, and the retail value of it, if I'm not mistaken, is $3,300. Also got this one in that exact palette, and this one was basically brand new because it still had all the tags on it, and that one as well. So this one came out to $360. That one came out to $360. That one came out to $360. This one came out to $360. If I'm, and, and if I'm not mistaken, actually this one that's already out also was in that lot and that palette and it came out to $360. Like I said, those numbers definitely look appealing, but there's a lot of labor intensive stuff that goes into this. There's a lot of moving parts. There's a lot of overhead costs. Like for example, this unit, I didn't even tell you how much it's gonna cost me. This unit is 1,164 square feet and it's a dollar per square foot. So I'm paying $1,164 each month. And the other overhead costs are the liability insurance that I had to get for this warehouse and the insurance for my truck. These are all the pallets that I'm gonna mention for this video because I do have a lot more pallets coming in and I'm gonna mention those in future videos, so definitely subscribe if you haven't. Well, that's the breakdown of the first pallets that I have purchased. And just a disclaimer, I have never purchased a pallet in my life before, so what you're seeing right now is like first time, no experience person flipping pallets. So right here I'm gonna mention my projected revenue, my cost of goods sold, my overhead cost, and my projected profit is what all of us want to know. Will I hit this goal? I'm not sure, you might have to stick around for a future video. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please drop a like, and until the next video,